Okay. Hey, everybody. Welcome. I am so glad you guys carved out some time this morning to hang out with us because I have some things that I want to share with you that I think are absolutely foundational for you and your Plexus business and just super, super important things for you to understand if you plan to really build this, which I know a lot of you on here have really big goals and I want to do everything that I can as your leader to support you, to equip you. Um, somebody's on mute. Let me mute. Everybody again. Okay. Okay. So, several things I want to talk to you about this morning. The first thing I'm going to go over is the foundation for your business. The second thing I want to talk to you about is the fuel for your business. And the third thing I want to talk about is the fruition of your business. Y'all like my alliteration? I made that up myself. I'm so proud of it. <laughs> All right, so let's get started. Let's talk about the foundation. And here's how this is going to work. I have a lot of things I want to share with you guys. So um, at the end, I'm going to open up for, uh, for a few minutes for your questions. Um, so write down any questions that you have while we are training. And um, at the end, we'll hopefully have time to address those and we'll just go ahead and get started. Also, just keep in mind that questions help me as a leader. They help me to know what you need training on. So no question too big or small. Um, I do ask that you keep it valuable and keep it positive. Um, no negativity. Let's not try to troubleshoot products here and things like that. But anything that is related to what we're going over today or anything you've been wondering about the business of Plexus, please ask because it really does help me as a leader to put training out that people find very valuable, okay? So let's get started. The foundation for your business. So that is going to be belief. Belief is everything. Belief, if it is rock solid and unshakable to the core belief, then you are building your business on bedrock. If you are lacking belief in one of these three areas that I'm going to share with you, you are building on sand, okay? Your belief is what is going to lay the foundation that is solid and dependable for you to build on so that when obstacles arise, which they will, that you do, your business doesn't crumble because you are stable and you are solid, okay? So you have to have rock solid, unshakable belief in three core areas. The first one is our products. You have to believe that what you are offering people with these products is life-changing and extremely valuable. You have to believe that our products are effective, that they work, and that they are changing lives. You have to understand that almost every health issue that we deal with as Americans can be traced back to one or more of these three things, blood sugar balance, gut health, inflammation. You need to memorize that vocabulary. Blood sugar balance, gut health, inflammation. If somebody shares with me that they're struggling with something, um, it could be a symptom, it could be a diagnosis, then I'm going to Google whatever that symptom or diagnosis is, and I'm going to Google it with the words gut health. So if somebody says fibromyalgia, I'm going to Google fibromyalgia and gut health. Fibromyalgia and blood sugar balance fibromyalgia and inflammation. I'm going to figure out a link between what our products help with and what someone is struggling with because marketing a product is not necessarily about selling. It's about figuring out what a person's needs are and then showing them how you can meet that need. Okay. My dog is being noisy over here. I hope that he, y'all can't hear that too loud. You gotta be quiet. Shh. Sorry. Okay, so your, if your belief in these products is not rock solid, then when someone comes to you and they say, I'm detoxing, this isn't for me, or I, the products aren't working, or I've been taking the products for 60 days and I'm not noticing anything, 
those things will really rattle you if you do not understand how our products work and that they are effective. If you don't have this belief in our products, don't worry, you can build it. And honestly, when I first started, this was one of the biggest hurdles that I had because I did not understand I thought I was selling weight loss to people. Honestly, that is what I thought. So when someone would come to me and they would say, I'm not losing weight, then it really made me second guess what I was doing. It made me doubt if I was even doing the right thing. Um, but then I heard some genius diamond say, focus on long-term health. And when that was like a light bulb for me. So when I learned about how these products are important for long-term health, and not just quick results, that's when I got fired up and passionate. When I learned about how blood sugar balance, gut health, and inflammation are related to almost everything, then I was like, everybody that I love and care about, they all need to be on these products. I wanted everybody that cared about on these products because I really do believe that strongly in them. And that switch really um, propelled me forward in my business because I was so excited at that point to share with everybody about our products, okay? So your health is like a triangle. It has three sides. Well, yeah, it has probably there's more aspects to your health than just three sides, but just for simplification purposes, we're gonna keep it to a triangle, okay? So everybody knows that one side of the triangle is nutrition. You can, there's no product on the market that's going to allow you to fuel your body with junk and be healthy, feel your best, look your best, right? Nutrition, your body has to have nutrients to um, function properly and to thrive. So everybody knows that nutrition is super important. The other side would be exercise because God made our bodies to work and produce and move, right? So we definitely need to be moving our bodies and exercising. Most of us live sedentary lifestyles in America because sometimes you have a desk job or you do some type of work that doesn't require you to move. And so exercise is something you have to be very intentional about. My husband builds houses, so he doesn't ever have to think about his exercise. It just, it just comes organically for him. But me, however, I have to be very intentional about moving my body every day and not being a couch potato, right? So everybody knows that diet and exercise are key components to your health. But here's what most people don't realize, that supplementation is the third side of the triangle. Every book I've ever read on food... And it could be anything from Trim Healthy Mama, which I read the entire 600-page book of, um, or It Starts With Food, which is Whole30. I mean, The Maker's Diet. I could go on and on about the books I've read about food. And there are many different schools of thought out there on how you should eat and what constitutes actually healthy diet. And here's one thing they all have in common, guys. That is a chapter in every single book about food devoted specifically to supplementation because you cannot get everything your body needs through diet alone. I don't care how clean or organically you eat. You cannot get, because of what's been done to our food supply, the way it's grown, the industrialization of it all, um, you, we, don't, we don't get the nutrients in our food that even our grandparents got 50 years ago. And so you have to have good supplements to fill in those gaps and to give your body everything that it needs, okay? So that is where Plexus comes in for people. And it's your job to educate them that you that supplementation is an essential part of a healthy lifestyle okay it's just like brushing your teeth or working out it's something you're going to want to do every day for long term because it's an important part of your health and everybody pays for their health at some point you can pay for it preventatively or you can pay for, to treat something oftentimes people start plexus because they are trying to heal or reverse something right? But some, even the healthiest person needs good supplements if they want to remain healthy, if they want to achieve optimal health, right? So focus on long-term health and that is what our products offer, okay? So you have to have unshakable belief in our product and you can build it. You don't have to have some jaw-dropping story 
of your own in order to have rock solid belief in our products. Because you, all you need to know is what's in the products and what they're doing in the body. You need to read testimonials of the thousands of people whose lives have been transformed because they were already eating healthy and exercising, but something was still missing. And Plexus was what was missing. These supplements, they, need, they were missing some things in their bodies, okay? So you can read testimonials, learn. Just learn about the products. And then when you hear your friend complaining about bloating after dinner, then you know that, oh my gosh, that's actually a symptom of a gut imbalance, which if she lets it go, will five to 10 years from now progress into something more chronic down the road, something like autoimmune or worse, okay? So um, any kind of symptoms that people have that seem like just minor annoyances now, you know in the back of your mind, that's gotta be addressed. Because it's not, it's not healthy. That's not thriving, right? It, if you can't let things like that go, okay? And need to be addressed. So belief in the products. You have to believe in what you are offering people and that it is very valuable to them, okay? The second thing you need to believe in, network marketing. You have to believe in this opportunity. And guys, this is so important. So I'm gonna hang out right here for just a few minutes on just network marketing. Why? Would somebody want to pursue a career in network marketing? Okay, we have people on this call that already had very successful careers, um, graduate degrees even, and they are pursuing a career in network marketing. Why? Because, guys, some of the wealthiest people in the world either own or endorse network marketing companies. Warren Buffett is one of them. Donald Trump is another. Speaking of Donald Trump, let me give you a real life example. Way before he even thought about being president. Um, I mean, and even regardless of your political stand, you cannot argue that the man is economically smart. Okay. And he was on a talk show years ago and so the host asked him, if you were to lose your millions today, what would you do tomorrow to begin rebuilding it? And without hesitation, he said, network marketing. And the audience roared with laughter at him. And he said, see, this is why I am up here and you are out there because I know a good opportunity when I see one and you don't. Okay. So I want you guys to know that network marketing, if it was a college class, it would be one of the easiest ones to take. You have to learn a simple set of skills. However, it is one of the highest paid professions in the world. Because would you rather get paid off of 100% of your own effort or 1% off of 100 people's effort? Which one makes more sense to you? Which one sounds like less work and less exhausting, right? Okay. So let's just dive into this for a second. Why network marketing? When you are venturing in a network marketing endeavor, you get the opportunity to leverage a big, huge name brand without inventing this entire product yourself, the entire system yourself, inventing the shipping department, the customer service department, the marketing department, all of these things you get to leverage just by paying $39.95 for a Plexus, some other network marketing companies charge way more than that to join. But for Plexus, $39.95. Guys, I, can, I cannot even take my family out to Chipotle for $39.95, okay? But that $39.95 has made me extremely profitable. And it just comes with your referral link, comes with your website. You don't have to build and design your own website. Your job is simply tell people about it. Like you just have to be willing to open your mouth and for being willing to share with people about your products or your opportunity, you are leveraging a huge name brand, also a shipping department, customer service department and marketing department without having to invent that whole thing yourself. So let's take a look at the difference between being self-employed and a business owner. Cause a lot of people don't understand that there is a difference. A self-employed person is basically an employee who works for himself. He is his own boss. However, if he doesn't work, he doesn't get paid, right? Um, he can pick his own hours, things like that. He does He has more freedom than if he were a W2 employee. 
but if he stops working, he stops getting paid. And that is because he um, basically owns a product or a service, but he doesn't necessarily own a system. Okay. So a business owner, on the other hand, owns a system. That means the business owner can step away from the system and the system keeps running without him or her. So that's a business owner. So it's the difference between um, if you own a lawn care business, for example, then you cut so many yards, you make X amount of dollars. But eventually there's only so many yards you can cut in, in a day, right? Only so many hours you can trade for dollars. But a business owner, when you own a system, you still keep getting paid even though you are not necessarily the one doing the hands-on work. Okay. So when you invent, when you are, when you have a network marketing opportunity, at first you are going to feel like you're self-employed because you have to build it. It would be much like if you were to open a Chick-fil-A when you're building the thing, if you're the owner and you're in the process of building the establishment, hiring all the people, getting the thing up and running, it's a lot of hours. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of energy. But once it's up and running, you don't have to work nearly as hard, right? You still get paid. Like you can take off for a week and go to Hawaii and your, your establishment will still run without you. Okay. Now take that to the lawn care business. If you had a lawn care business, eventually you hire help and you're, you're paying your workers, which is an expense, but your workers are still running your business without you. You are officially a business owner. You can still get paid because you own a system that's called being a business owner. Well, network marketing, once you build this, your business can run without, it's like pushing a snowball uphill. When you first start, it's going to feel um, hard. Like, and the, and the higher up the hill you go, the heavier it will feel until you get to the top of the hill. And then that snowball takes off on the other side and it starts to get bigger and bigger, collect more snow on its own with little to new, no effort from you. That's called duplication, which I'm going to talk about in a little while, but that is generally what it's like to build a business right now. You guys are in the building phase of your business. You have to build it. If you don't work, you will not get paid. If you're in the middle of building a Chick-fil-A, can you just take off for a week? Because you, you know, you had, um, you decided to go on vacation or your kid got sick or whatever. I mean, you can't just take off. You're, you're building a business. Can't take off without repercussions, right? It's not going to just keep going without you. Okay. So, um, that's the difference between being self-employed and a business owner. All of you are business owners, but right now in the beginning, while you're building it, you're going to feel like you're self-employed. Okay. All right. So you're buying a system. So, and the wealthiest people in the world, just so you know, they own a system. Okay. Um, a social economy. So social media has changed everything about the way business is done and about the way and the way money is made in general. If you are a business owner and you are not on social media, you are missing a huge share of the market. Social media, it has removed geographic barriers. You know how network marketers built their businesses even just 20 years ago? They would have to go door to door. Like you'd have to live in the same town as them or they'd call you on the phone. Like you'd have to pick up the phone and cold call people, which is totally fine. Because I mean, I have done that. In my, if I know people and I can call them on the phone, I will totally call them on the phone. But social media has allowed me to connect with somebody across the country in a matter of seconds and actually build rapport with them, have a relationship with them. Um, and I don't have to be, have a face to face connection with them in order to start the relationship. So even 20 years ago, if you were to call somebody on the phone, generally you would have had to have met them in person at some point, right? Well, now with the advent of social media and just internet technology in general, um, we can connect with somebody anywhere on the globe in a matter of seconds and they can become your ambassador or your customer, right? So social media, you can say something one time and hundreds or thousands of people see it and hear it, okay? So just know that social media is a huge tool that we have available to us that is a big advantage that we have in network marketing than you know network marketers had 20 years ago so keep that in mind social marketing is another term for network marketing um so leverage that another advantage of network marketing is that it's low startup 
I mean, think about if you were going to open, my husband opened a, a lawn care business at one point years ago. He spent $7,000 on equipment just to get it started before he even cut the first lawn. He bought a lawnmower, a weed eater, a trailer to haul it all. So it was expensive to start this business and think about how many yards he would have to cut before he could become profitable. Think about if you were a Chick-fil-A owner, it cost $10,000 to open a Chick-fil-A. That's just like the deposit basically. Um, and then how long it's going to take you to work before you actually turn a profit. That means pay off the 10,000 uh, or earn enough that covers the 10,000 that expense and then turn a profit. Okay. Think about if you were going to, well, I'll get to that in a second. Just know that at low startup with network marketing, sometimes companies charge a thousand dollars or more to join their company and they encourage you to invest in thousands more in inventory and things like that. Plexus is very simple, guys. $39.95 gets you a website. You don't have to carry inventory, none of that. So $39.95 for um and get a return on your investment very very quickly i mean you just cannot be you won't find a better deal than that um overhead network marketing there's very little overhead i mean you have to pay 39.95 a year to keep your website up and running i've made a return on that investment thousands of times over guys so with most businesses you have a lot of overhead a lot of upkeep so in the long care example my husband would have had to upkeep his lawnmower, change the oil, change the belts, um, replace a window because a rock slung and hit somebody's window while he's cutting the grass. So lots of expenses when you're running a business. Chick-fil-A, the expenses will be more. You're running an entire brick and mortar business, right? And you have to pay a whole lot of employees, a lot of overhead. So with network marketing, there's very little, if any, overhead. Now I do encourage you to invest in your business an investment is something that when you put it in, it's going, what you get out of it is going to be bigger than what you put in. So that would be things like going to convention or going to Ruby retreat, things like that. Going to Super Saturday, investing in training, things like that. So I do encourage you to invest, but that is not an expense. That's an investment. It's going to cause you to actually make more money. But with network marketing, you can start your own business for very little upfront and very little overhead. And there's just not many opportunities out there like that. Even real estate agents have to pay thousands in advertising and things like that. Okay. Um, and then it's a simple set of skills that anybody can learn and get good at and earn you financial freedom and time freedom. Like I said earlier, if this was a college class, it'd be one of the easiest ones to take, but it can earn you complete freedom. It allows ordinary people like you and I to achieve extraordinary things, right? So, I mean, you can, I know Christina was a teacher and she could be the best teacher in the whole entire county but it's not going to make her more money. She can't, when Christmas rolls around, she can't teach harder so that she can earn more money to pay for her kids Christmas, right? There's a cap on her income level. So with this, there is no income cap and you are going to get paid directly in proportion to the amount of value that you're adding to the company. So that means that you're not going to get paid a penny more than what value you're adding or a penny less. And I'm not saying that your worth is your paycheck. That's not what I'm saying because we all have inherent worth outside of how much money we make. But I am saying your paycheck will reflect how much value you're providing the company. So it's not just about how much product that you can sell. It is about how many people you can help be successful to right? So it is a people helping people business. If I, as a leader, am not reaching down to support my team and help them also be successful, I won't be successful either. So I do love that it is a people helping people business. Also recognition. Think about how many times in the last 24 hours you have been complimented or recognized for a job well done. Most people in their jobs or in their life, they don't get recognized or complimented, right? Even if they do their job very well, rare is it that they get recognized. This business comes with lots of recognition. And so that is a lot of fun. And it's just, it's very um, rewarding to be recognized for a job well done or for your accomplishments and achievements. Also, we have incentives, trips, 
tons of fun. So this month you can get a free set of AirPods just for helping three people get healthier, right? I mean, who does that? Our company is so generous to us and we, they're constantly giving us incentives because they really do have our best interests at heart and they want us to be successful. And we have trips that we go on, Hawaii, things like that, that you can earn um, as a reward for your leadership and for a job well done. So, and also we have tons of fun. Our culture, I, one thing I hear over and over and over from people is that they love the community that we have. A lot of people are, are lacking that community feel or just being surrounded by people who are driven and who are ambitious and also encouraging. We have a friendly competitiveness, but we love on each other. We enjoy each other's company. We cheer each other on and encourage each other to go for more and don't settle and reach your potential. And we push each other, okay? And we don't have a lot of drama on our team. Thank God, we don't. Like we have the best people to work with and I am deeply, grateful for that so this company i mean our our team does come with community and that is something a lot of times especially if you work from home um there's a lot of opportunity there are a lot of opportunities out there that would allow you to work from home but then you lack that community feel right and so we have the best of both worlds um generous comp plan for just sharing what we love and everybody's selling something right if i go to a nice restaurant with my husband i really enjoyed it i'm going to post it online and then my friends are going to want to go there do i get compensated for that no if i share my favorite shampoo with somebody do i get compensated for that no if i go and watch frozen 2 with my daughters and then i post stories singing into the unknown and my friends go and watch the movie. Do I get compensated for those movie tickets I just sold? No, I don't. Uh, my friend Clarita Yoder posted on her stories the other day some conversation starter cards that she got off of Amazon. I went and bought them. She didn't make a dime off of that, right? So everybody's selling something. Even if you are an employee, you have to sell yourself to get the job. You're selling yourself, you're selling your service, whatever it is, you are selling something. Everyone is, but we get compensated generously for sharing what we love. Another thing that is very significant about a network marketing opportunity is that you can literally take a 30 year career and condense it into three to five. That is offering hope to people. Imagine if you are 50 years old, you finally got all your kids grown out the house and through college and you look up and you are like, I have no retirement. I have been so focused on raising my kids and meeting their needs. I have no retirement. They don't have time to start over, start a new career, save up for retirement. You can take a 30 year career with network marketing and compress it into three to five. Here's what the statistics prove. Network marketing on average, okay, this is not Plexus specific. If you do income producing activity every single day for 10 years, 95% of the people who do that consistently for 10 years will be at the top of their compensation plan. That's, that's as close to a guarantee of success as you are going to get. What does a diamond make? Average income for a diamond is over $30,000 a month. If it took you 10 years to get to a place where you're earning $30,000 a month, would that be worth it to you? Of course it would. If it took you 10 years to get to a place where you're earning $10,000 a month, would that be worth it to you? It should. Most people work their entire 40 year career, pour their blood, sweat and tears into it and never make that amount of profit. Okay, so know that you are offering hope to people and see the potential in people and show them their potential. Show them what is possible. Most people quit dreaming because they get into adulthood, they had all these high hopes and dreams for their future and then reality hits and then they think that's just not, they kind of just accept their life. Don't let life happen to you, happen to your life, okay? So basically, essentially, 
Network marketing allows you to choose a dream life over a dream job. And so you need to believe what you are offering people with this opportunity. And that is going to be the key to you building this. Because you're not going to create workers, people who want to do this with you, they're not going to catch the vision with you if you don't understand the vision yourself. So believe in this opportunity and what you're offering people. You have to have rock solid, unshakable belief in network marketing. So that when haters come along, because I promise you they will, it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when, and they say, oh, that's some pyramid scheme or whatever, um, you know that they just don't know what you know. If they knew what you know, they'd be making the decision you make. All right? So belief in the products, belief in network marketing. The third thing you have to believe in is yourself. You have to believe that you have what it takes to build this and build it as big as you want to build it. You have to believe. And this was one of the biggest struggles that I had in the beginning when I started this business too. I definitely had unshakable belief in the opportunity. Like I knew that network marketing was a viable career opportunity. It was a great fit for my family. I saw the vision and saw the potential for what it could be. But these are the thoughts that I would have. Well, Leslie lives in the same town that I do. And she's a Plexus ambassador too. So why would somebody join me and not her? It's negativity, guys. That's head trash. It's not true. I would also think this. So what if I was a diamond? I have all these thousands of people looking to me for leadership. Looking to me to tell them what to do. I don't know if I have what it takes to do that. So I didn't realize that these were negative thoughts until I went through some mindset training. I heard a call by Amber Miller and she was just describing all the thoughts that she would have. I could relate so much to her story. And she mentioned a book called Switch on Your Brain by Dr. Caroline Lee. Guys, I listened to that book and it did not just change my business, it changed my life. Your thoughts are actually physical things that can be measured. And your thoughts will determine your beliefs and your beliefs will determine your actions. So this book, Dr. Caroline Leaf is a Christian scientist and she basically just takes scripture and just shows how science is catching up with what God said thousands of years ago. And so these are biblical principles that I just had never thought about before. And I just had, I mean, I'd been through a lot of adversity in my life. So I definitely had a lot of um, negative thoughts and head trash that I had to work through. But here's what this book thought, taught me is that it was up to me. I could choose my thoughts and that I had a responsibility to choose my thoughts. So it's not that successful people don't have negative thoughts. It's that they know what to do with the negative thoughts. They know how to replace those negative thoughts. So God has a lot to say about your thought life. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Take every thought captive. Whatever's true and lovely and noble and excellent and worthy of praise, think on these things. Why do you think God has so much to say about what we think? Because you will never outperform the quality of your thinking. So it is so important that you think about what you are thinking about. What are you telling yourself? Are you telling yourself, oh, I'm just, oh, nobody wants to do this business with me. Nobody wants these products. People are quitting. Everybody's detoxing. Can't find anybody who wants to do it. Everybody in my town's already an ambassador. What are you telling yourself? I always get overlooked. What do you think is going to happen if that's what you're telling yourself? Your thoughts will become your beliefs and your beliefs will determine your actions. Your thoughts will become self-fulfilling prophecies and you will be tomorrow what you are thinking about today. So think about what you are thinking about. And I'm going to give you a real life example from the Bible 
this actually happened. The woman who had the bleeding that would not stop. Doctors couldn't figure it out. She spent all her money. Nobody can help her. Jesus comes to town. And she thinks to herself, if I can just touch his clothing, I will be healed. And so she got up. And mind you, there are thousands of people crowding around him. Because at this point, he's pretty famous. And she's got the hurdle of having to get through all of these people just so she can touch the edge of his clothing. And she did it. She touched his, his clothing. And then Jesus felt it. He felt power go out from him. And he turns around and he said, who touched me? Who did that? And she said, it was me. And he said, woman, you, your faith has made you well. Now, from this example, what we see is that it was not her faith that healed her. It was her faith that propelled her to take the action that would bring the healing. She did not sit there and think to herself, oh my gosh, I don't know how much, there's no way I can get through all those people. I mean, I'm just a nobody. He doesn't know me. Why would he heal me? There are all these other sick people out there. Why me? You know, I, there's no way I can get through all of those people. She wasn't sitting there telling herself that. She told herself, if I can just touch his clothing, I will be healed. And that thought propelled her to get up and take the action necessary. So what are you telling yourself? Are you telling yourself everybody wants what I have? Everybody needs these products. Everybody wants to do this with me. I have the fastest growing team in the company. Whatever it is that you are telling yourself, if it is negative, and just mind you, most thoughts are not neutral. They're either positive or negative. Okay, so if they are not positive, then they're by default, most of the time, they're going to be negative. Okay, because thoughts normally have emotions attached to them. Not all the time. It's not like, oh, I need to go put my shoes on. That's neutral. But most thoughts are either neutral, um, negative or positive. So think about what you're telling yourself. When you sit down to do your IPA, what script is playing in your head? You have a choice what you are going to think. You are not a victim. You have the power to choose your thoughts, which will change your beliefs and therefore change your actions. Okay. So you have to believe in yourself and it starts with your thought life. Um, most people in this business are not naturals at it. A lot of people think, oh, I'm just going to, I'm going to sign up. I'm going to post on Facebook. I'm excited. I'm going to talk to my closest friends and families. They're going to be excited as I am. And then they're disappointed when they realize that is just, people just are not as excited as they are and they can't figure out why. And then they start to tell themselves things like, oh, maybe this isn't for me. Or they'll sign up and they think, oh, I'm going to try this. I'm just going to see how it goes. And if I, you know, see some results from it, then I'll just keep going. Um, can I just share with you that most people are not naturals at this? Most people are not. They don't just sign up and then it just fly through the ranks. I mean, I can think of one person who's done that and that it's Celeste Wynn. And she flew to Diamond in nine months and she flew to di double Diamond in less than two years. And when people ask her, how long did it take you to go Diamond? She says 37 years. You know why? It's because you will either reap the rewards or pay the consequences of the life that you have lived the five years leading up to the time where you decided to start this business. So if you have spent the previous five years of your life really pouring into and investing in relationships and networking with a lot of people, then guess what you are going to see? Fast results. Now, if you sign up for this and that you don't see fast results, is that an indicator of whether you can do this or not? No. It just means you cannot compare your chapter two to someone else's chapter 20. Okay. So this business is 80% mindset and only 20% skill set. And that is why we're spending so much time on belief this morning, because I know that this is the foundation for you. I mean, anybody can go and learn the skills. That's the easy part. Learning the skills of how to build this. That's the easy part. But can you get control of what's between your ears? Because that is what is going to determine how far you can go. And think about a baby learning to walk. Do they take a few steps, fall down, and they just sit there and say, well, 
guess this walking thing's just not for me, not cut out for it. No, you just get up and try again, okay? You fail forward. I have embarrassed myself in this business more times than I care to admit. There is no success without failure in there. The only way for you to not be successful at this is for you to just give up. Anybody can learn the skills and get good at it. And it starts with your thoughts. So if you're not an automatic natural at it, if you don't fly to gold in a month or go fast start or you're not diamond in a year, then just know that welcome to the masses. I mean, 99% of us, that's not our story. Most success stories, there's a lot of struggle in there. Well, we expect our success to look like this, linear, but really it's like this. But you know what it should be? It's more like this. As long as it, there can be peaks and valleys, but you should be going up still on an incline. But there will be peaks and valleys. And know that you will not face a challenge in this business that every other ambassador in the company has not also faced. And if there are other people out there that are being successful at this with the same products, the same comp plan, the same team, the same leadership, whatever, then you can too. Okay, we all have the same hurdles. We all have the same challenges. We all have people tell us no. We all have people ignore us. We all have people detox. We all have the same issues, period. Okay, so if there are other people out there that have the same hurdles and they are doing it, then that should give you hope and inspire you that if they can be successful, so can you. Okay, mindset and sometimes time management, but most of the time I feel like mindset and emotions, like managing your emotions in this business are the places where people really get caught up. It's not usually that they don't know how to do something. And I find that to be so true as I coach people to success in this business. It's not usually that, oh, I don't know how, I don't know what to say to this person, or I don't know how to recruit, or I don't know this, or I don't know that. It's normally something in their thought life, something in their mindset, or their emotion management that is getting them caught up or holding them back from reaching their goals most of the time. So just be aware of that. Stay off that emotional roller coaster, guys. Know that there, the hurdles will come and it's not an indicator of whether or not you're going to reach your goals and be successful, okay? So just expect that. It's just part, I mean, there's hurdles in any part of life that is worth doing. I mean, think about parenting. I mean, who likes to change poopy diapers? It comes with the territory, right? Does it mean it's not worth it to be a mother? Of course not. Does it mean it's not worth it to be a mother when your teenager mouths off at you? Well, that depends. I'm just kidding. It's worth it, y'all. It's worth it. It's hard, but it's worth it, okay? Nothing that is worth doing is ever easy. It's often an uphill climb, but that is what gives you the sense of accomplishment and pride and achievement when you realize that you just did something that most people won't do takes grit and it starts in your mind okay so you can do this and you need to believe that all right so that's the foundation of your business it's belief it is as simple as that it is belief belief in our products belief in network marketing belief in yourself that you have what it takes and I really do believe that every person on this call has what it takes if I didn't you wouldn't have been invited because notice we only have 17 people on this call and you were privately invited here today for a reason because we believe in you and we see your potential. All right. Okay. So we talked about the foundation for your business, which is belief. Let's talk about the fuel for your business and that is your why. So you definitely want to be driven by your why in this business and not your emotions. Your why should be big enough to make you cry. It needs to be something that's bigger than yourself and you really cannot skip this step, okay? And you really need to nail this down and just take some time to just brain dump, sit in, in a quiet place and write out your thoughts. Dream big because you can go as far as you want to go, but dream big. Um, ask yourself this question. If your calendar was completely empty, and your bank account was completely full, 
what would you be doing? What would your life look like? What would your husband be doing? What would your kids be doing? What would you be doing with your kids? Where would you live at? Where would you go? You really need to think about your why. And you cannot skip this because this is going to be the fuel for your business. Okay? This is what should get you out of bed excited every day because you know what you have to look forward to. It's the life that you designed. Did you know that mo more people, I mean, most people spend more time planning out their vacation than they do planning out their life? That is alarming to me. Most people just like let life happen to them. They're, they're reactive. Well, you're going to be proactive. You are going to think about what you want your life to look like. And then you're going to take action steps daily to work toward that life. Who would you give to? Who would you bless? If you were making thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars a month, can you imagine what a blessing that would be not to just your own family, but to your community? I really firmly believe that God's people should have that kind of money because it's going to fund the work of the kingdom, right? And it starts in our own homes, but it doesn't stop there. So you need to dream big and you need to be very clear on what your why is. Why are you doing this? What drew you to this? You need to know that, okay? It needs to be way bigger than you. And then you need to give this time to grow. So like I said earlier, if you, most people are not naturals at this. It takes some, you have to learn the skills, right? It starts out with your influence, with your inner circle, and it expands from there. But you have to be willing to learn the skills, get good at it, and you have to be willing to put in the work. And you have to be willing to give it time to grow. Do not compare your journey to someone else's journey because comparison is the thief of joy. Stay in your own lane and give this time to grow. Most people can go silver within their first 30 days of working this consistently. Most people can. Um, not every single person. And if you didn't go silver in your first 30 days, that also is not an indicator of your long-term success because one of my favorite diamonds, Sarah Marble, it took her seven months to go silver, okay? And she's now a diamond, top of the company. So um, average time to gold is around five months or so. Then that's just an average. That means some people do it much faster. Some people do it much slower, okay? But, um, Really, the keys are just give it do, consistency, which I'm going to talk about in just a minute, and just being willing to learn and being willing to work this every single day. Okay, so give it time to grow, and anybody can do this again if it's not if your results are not coming as fast as you had hoped. Then, welcome to 99.5% of ambassadors in play because I mean, if I, mine. If, I, if my goals had come as fast as I wanted to, I'd have been diamond like five years ago. So, and I'm a sapphire, I'm not at the top of the pay plan yet, but I'm almost there. I'm one rank away. Okay, so be willing to work, be willing to learn, expect hurdles. And I'm not going to tell you it's going to be easy. I'm not going to sit here and act like I, I do believe anyone can do this. It's not a matter of if you can, it's a matter of if you're willing. So, I'm not going to tell you, oh, it's easy. It's easy, quick money. Um, it's not easy. It's simple. The business is simple. Easy? No, not easy, but worth it. It's been worth every sacrifice I've made. Okay? So it's worth it. Your why is worth it. All right, so that's the fuel for your business is your why. And the last thing I want to talk about is the fruition of your business. How it all happens, it's action. Just taking the action. So I've said several times, you have to be willing to learn the skills. And there's really only four main ones you have to learn and master and get good at if you want to be a leader in this company. And here they are. Recruiting. Retention. Duplication. And leadership. 
Those are the four things that you have to master. Okay. So before I jump into the nuts and bolts of all of that, I want to tell you that the most important thing in regards to these skills is consistency on all four. Okay. So you can work this business part-time, but you cannot work it sometimes. If you treat this like a hobby, it's going to pay you like a hobby. If you treat it like a business, it's going to pay you like a business. What, how do you work a hobby? A hobby is something you do in your spare time. A hobby is something that you enjoy doing and you like, you make extra money from it, but it's not something like you can kind of take it or leave it. Okay. So that's hobby income. So if you want to supplement your income, then, then feel free to work like that. But I think most of you on here have bigger goals than that. Um, so if you want this to pay you like a business, you have to treat it like a business. That means you work every single day consistently. That is the key. Consistency has a compound effect. So that means that two plus two plus two no longer equals six. Eventually two plus two plus two equals a thousand consistency compounds over time, but you have to be consistent. It's just like if you want to be really fit, you can't just eat healthy three days a week. You have to eat healthy seven days a week. You have to work out multiple times every week. And you can't just work out, you know, this week and then next week, take that week off. And then the following week, you're all in. And then the next week, you're, you know, hit and miss. Consistency is what is required if you plan to build this. Okay, so you have to treat this like a business. If I was building a Chick-fil-A, could I just show up sometimes? No, I'd have to show up every day. If I decided that I was going to show up sometimes, I'd be off to a very poor start and people would think I was a very poor manager, right? So if you're, this is your storefront. Basically, you have to be open for business every day. Now I say every day, I want you guys to keep in mind, when you hear me say every day, I want you to hear, at least six days a week. I mean, not at least, but six days a week um, max because I believe in taking a Sabbath. So I do not work on Sundays ever. Um, I mean, there have been rare occasions where I get sucked into it, but I, I generally ignore plexus related things on Sunday. And sometimes I will even nicely say, I'll get with you on that tomorrow because I don't want to be rude to people or ignore people, but I'll say, I'll get with you first thing tomorrow on that. Um, but on Sundays, I worship and I rest. And I find that, I mean, that's God's pattern, right? And when you do, he, he created the world in six days, not, because, not for him. He didn't need the rest, but to set a pattern for us. And I really believe that. So when I take that day of rest and let my brain reset and my body reset, then I am way more effective during the week and I don't get burnt out so quickly, right? So we need that day of rest. But the other days, all in. I am all in and I'm working and I'm focused and I'm consistent. Okay. And every successful person in this business would share those traits. Okay. So consistency, you have to just treat this like a business, regardless of how you feel. You can't just work when you feel like working. I mean, it's, uh, when I was homeschooling my kids, I couldn't just do their math lesson when I feel like doing their math lesson. Otherwise nobody would ever learn a thing. So consistency is required if you're serious about this business. If you want financial freedom, you have to be willing to be consistent, okay? So I wanted to preface the four pillars by saying that about consistency. That really is required. It's a non-negotiable if you're serious, okay? Um, I mean, if you were working at a job, you know, and your friend calls you and says, hey, you want to go eat lunch? And your friend is not, you know that your friend is not going to help you grow your business, right? Right. I mean, if you had a job, you would have to say, I'm sorry, I can't do that. I could do it another time, but I'm committed to my business. Okay. A lot of times people think, especially if you're a stay at home mom, I have found this, that people think because I'm at home that I can just do whatever I want to do whenever I want to do it. However, I have a routine. I still have a routine. I still have commitments. I have responsibilities, a lot of responsibilities. And the only way I can get everything done is just very intentionally. So you don't need more time. If you're telling yourself, I wish I had more time to do this. I wish I had more time that you don't need more time. God gave you exactly the amount of time that you need to do the things he's called you to do. 
exactly the amount of time that you need. What do you need to say no to so that you can say yes to your why? You don't need more time. You need more intentionality, okay? Um, okay, so let's talk about the four pillars. Recruiting is the first one that you have to make. You gotta know how to enroll people. You have to know how to get people to buy your products. You gotta know how to follow up, how to close the deal, all that good stuff. And I just spent 45 minutes Monday night training on that. Hopefully you guys were on that call. Um, but if you weren't, then there's plenty of training on how to recruit, but just know that that is the first skill that you have to learn before you learn any other skill. You got to learn how to enroll people. Okay. But since I just trained on that, I'm not going to spend time here doing that. Um, I do want to talk a little bit about retention, which is the next pillar. So that means just keeping the people that you do enroll and you do that through providing great customer service, through making them fall in love with their products, helping them get good results. Um, there is a script at, that's pinned to the top of Plexus Freedom Team. It's called Customer Care or something like that. Um, and it is basically 10 touches in the first 30 days when someone orders their welcome pack. It tells you exactly what to say on which day. So I encourage you to go copy and paste that script, save it to the notes on your phone. That way you don't have to dig for it in the team page. And when you have somebody join, right on your planner, um, three days later, seven days later, 10 days later, 14 days later, you, they're on your planner. That way you sit down to work, you have it right there, you know exactly who you need to touch base with that day. And then all you have to do is pull up the notes app on your phone. You see that it's day three for Kara, then you know exactly what to say on day three. I mean, you can just copy and paste that right there. It's very simple, um, but you just have to be willing to do it. Okay, so you have to be taking good care of your people. Perks report is another thing you guys need to be aware of. This is brand new for all of us, myself included. We have never had this kind of visibility in, in our business before, and I'm really excited about it. But go in your back office, go click on my business, and under there you'll see perks report. That will show you who has earned perks. So perks, if you don't know, that's our loyalty rewards program. And people can earn free products just for ordering products that they normally order with a hundred PV subscription or more, okay? So it'll show you if anybody has turned their subscription off, what they are at risk of losing. They have three days to turn their subscription back on before their perks credits are forfeited. This morning I went in that perks report, I found somebody with 450 perks credits that were about, and they already, they had 79 PV. It's like, why? You know? And if I did not look at that perks report, then this person could have forfeited basically $45 in free product that they earned, like it's theirs, and they're about to lose it if they don't get their sub back on. Okay, so that is needs to be part of your daily MO. If you have people in your downline, you need to be making a habit. It only takes a couple of minutes a day, but make it a habit to check that report every single day. It can be the first thing you do every single day when you sit down to work. That way you don't forget, but it's really important that you check that report and that you are reaching out to because people don't want to lose their perks. Most of the time, people are like, oh my gosh, I did not mean to do that. Um, so they don't want to miss out on their perks. So take good care of your people. We have lots of training on retention too, but that's the main thing I wanted to let you guys know about retention and then duplication. So this is the third pillar and really it goes hand in hand with recruiting because it often happens at the same time. Okay. So it is perfectly acceptable and encouraged for you to get every person that you know on these products. So it's fine to lead with the product. However, it is not fine to stay there. Every person who joins your team needs to hear about the opportunity that is available to them with that membership they just got. You need to let them know that $39.95, it came with a referral link. These products help with autoimmune, migraines, list out some things. When I first started, that for, for me, the people that I first thought of that needed these products was my mom, my mother-in-law, and a, a friend from church. Who comes to mind for you? So you have to think, get people thinking in terms of who they can share this with um, and then get people thinking in terms of this opportunity. If I'm talking to somebody that I see potential in, 
I mean, everybody knows three people, first of all. So that script I just gave you of who, these are the people that came to mind for me when I saw this list of issues, who comes to mind for you? I would say that to a perfect stranger. But if I'm signing someone up that I know, I'm going to tell them what potential I see in them. And I will ask them questions like, have you thought about ways to earn extra income? Have you ever thought about doing something like this before? I always ask to gauge their interest level. And then I tell them what potential I see. I call it out. And also understand that most people cannot conceive of themselves doing something like this at first. If you were on the call Monday night, you heard me say, to recruit someone for the products, it's an average of eight to 12 exposures before someone will make a buying decision. With the opportunity, it is no different. The first jewel on my team was Christina Williams. I got her, she loved the products already. Like she had come off three blood pressure medications. I mean, she loved the products, but even after that, it took me a year of consistently following up with her about the business before she ever said yes. So you just know what you have to offer people. You visualize what their life would look like if they were making $10,000 a month and you are unwilling to give up on them. Because most, I mean, almost everybody that I have signed, I've signed up over a hundred people at this point myself. Almost all of them said no at first. I've only had one out of that 100. So literally 1% guys of my joins have said, yes, sign me up. Where, where, how, what do I do? The other 99% were all no's at first. And you just have to be willing to follow up with them. And it looks like this. Hey, Susie, I know that a couple months ago, I mentioned this to you and you didn't think this was a good fit for you. But let me tell you, since that conversation, this is what has happened. I've earned X amount of dollars or I've hit this rank or I earned this trip or this incentive or somebody on my team just hit this rank. And I'm telling you, I see that potential in you because of this reason. And be personable and genuine with people. Think of reasons why they would be good at this. One way to get good at that skill is just having a mental Rolodex of success stories in your head. Watching diamond documentaries is a really good way to get familiar with all the different types of people who have been successful at Plexus. Learn their stories. That way, when you're talking to your prospect, you can say, you remind me so much of this person. You are just like them. You're no different than they are. If they can do it, you can do it. And it's just casting the vision for people. If you have rock solid belief in this opportunity, so much so that you are kind of just sitting here scratching your head, wondering why everybody and their mama is not doing this, then you will call that out to people. That kind of energy and passion and enthusiasm is contagious. And I don't do this in a pushy way. I mean, with Christina, as an example, I would just reach out the first, the first time I followed up with her about the, I mentioned it to her and she was like, sure, I'm open to hearing about it. And then she just went silent on me. Like she just, she ignored me. So I reach out and I say, Christina, I just got my first paycheck with a comma in it. That got her wheel spinning. She knew what that meant. She knew what a comma meant, right? Um, and she was on a fixed income as a teacher, salary earner, right? And so she started thinking at that point, well, an extra $1,000 a month, that'd be really nice for my family, you know? And so she still ignored me. The next month, I sent her a diamond documentary of Melissa Eichenhorst. And I'm like, girl, that she retired as a school teacher and you are just like her. You remind me so much of her. If she can do this, you can do this. I'm telling you, guess what? Cricket. She ignored me and I would do this every single month. And sometimes she would, she would show a little interest. She'd be like, yeah, I, I'm, I think I am interested in doing that. But then she didn't do anything. And then it finally got to a point where my business was growing. And I said, Christina, I just made $4,500 this month. And I'm telling you, if I can do that, you can do that. And she knew that to be a fact because we went to high school together and she knew who I was. I was not somebody special. And so she's like, if she can do it, I can do it, right? And so she just knew that that was more income than she could cap out at even with her specialist degree. A specialist degree is a graduate degree right under a doctorate degree. 
And so that really got her attention. And then she decided she was doing it. And she was not an automatic rock star, y'all. For her to go silver, it took her working three weeks consistently and hard. And I mean, posting every day, reaching out and following up every day for her to even get her first join. So she wasn't an automatic rock star that just took off flying. Okay. So just know that most people cannot conceive of themselves doing something like this at first. It oftentimes takes a leader to come along and point out someone's potential that they oftentimes did not even see for themselves. I know that's been the case in my own life. I'm very deeply thankful that Fallon Black believed in me. She really believed that she was going to be a diamond and that I was too. And I never would have saw that in myself, but she saw my potential and she told me of my potential. She poured that belief into me. So be that leader for somebody. Tell people what potential you see. It could be their integrity. Integrity is really what you build on. I mean, if you, if people can't, I mean, I can teach somebody the skill set of this business, how to build this, but I cannot teach someone integrity. I cannot give somebody a desire to do the right thing. If people do not trust you, they may or may not buy a product from you, but they're not going to go the distance with you. So I'm just not going to build this with someone who doesn't have integrity. I'm looking for people with character, right? So when I come across somebody who has integrity, and they're warm and friendly and kind to people, that is, I'm telling them that, girl, I'm telling you, most of the successful people in this company share these qualities that you have. You could do this. And then you follow up about it. You be relentless. And I don't mean pushy. Be persistent, but don't be pushy. To get complimenting someone on what you see their strengths are, nobody ever gets tired of hearing the good things about themselves, right? Nobody gets tired of hearing those things. So just reminding someone the potential and why you look up to them and why you believe in them and how they could do this, that is not being pushy. That's being loving and it's being a leader. So believe in people know what this opportunity could mean for their family. If they already have influence, even better. People that have influence, they generally do fly very quickly. Okay? So just be that leader for somebody. And that is really what it takes to create business builders. So if you are in your business right now, if you have no problems getting people on the products, but you feel like you're struggling to find people who want to work this business with you, my first question would be, have you shared this opportunity at least eight to 12 times with this person? Because if you haven't yet, then you don't have any right to complain about why they're not working yet. And my second question for you would be, do you have unshakable rock solid belief in this opportunity? And are you sharing that with them? Like, are you even sharing it with them? If you have unshakable belief in the opportunity, then you're going to be just as on fire about what this opportunity offers people as you are about what the products offer people. You have to believe in both the products and the opportunity. Okay. So some of you are probably excited to share the products with anybody and everybody, but you're hesitating when it comes to the business. Why? Guys, I love our products. I really do. I still take my products every single day, six years later. So does my husband. We believe in these products. But do you know that it's the business opportunity that has transformed my family's life? It is because of this opportunity that my children are enrolled in the best private school in Savannah. It is because of this opportunity that my husband is doing work that he actually loves. He has the freedom to do that. This opportunity has changed my family's life. It, my life does not look right now like it did five years ago. Completely different because of this opportunity. So when you're talking to your prospect, you visualize what their life would look like. If they're making $10,000 a month, would that change some things for them? Probably. It's not about the money. It's about what the money allows you to do. Okay? So this is how you duplicate. You share the opportunity with people. 
and then you don't give up on them. All right, and then leadership, that's the fourth pillar. So leadership is simply influence. Leaders, that's all it means. The definition of leadership, it's influence. Your ability to influence someone else, okay? So as far as um, your team is concerned, leadership would be teaching them simple systems that will help them achieve success. That's what leadership is, teaching someone simple systems that will help them reach their goals and be successful, okay? So that means you have to have simple systems. I do understand that when you first join and you're interested in the business and you get thrown in the team page, there's a lot, I mean, it's to infinity and beyond the amount of resources that that page is. It's like an all-you-can-eat buffet, okay? When you go to an all-you-can-eat buffet, do you go to that, do you approach it like, uh, I'm going to eat some of every single thing on this buffet. No, you're going and you're picking your favorite things and you have some of those, okay? So the team page is kind of the same way, but you're going to have to have your own kind of toolbox that you share with prospects over and over and over, like a triplex video or the microbiome video or maybe certain scientific articles that deal with thyroid issues or fibromyalgia or migraines and how that's related to your gut or whatever. You do need to be creating a collection of your favorite tools as a leader. That way, when someone joins your team and they are interested, you know exactly what tools that they can use over and over and over. Okay. So a leadership in this business is teaching someone simple systems to help them be successful at this and reach their goals. And it's casting vision and belief for people. So the best leaders in this company have high belief and they pour that belief into others. They cast the vision for people. That's what makes people want this. If you're telling people, okay, you're thinking, okay, I'm the leader now. I need to tell people to do this, 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 and this. They want to be successful. Okay. That's fine. But just know that you can't call someone to action before they are inspired. In order for someone to go do the hard things that you just told them to do, they have to have a why behind that first. So you have to inspire before you call to action. If somebody joins and they're interested in a business and you, go, you tell them to go reach out to 60 people, if they don't have a solid why or they're not inspired about what this could mean for their family, do you think they're going to go reach out to 60 people right then? Probably not. So inspire people, cast vision for them, show them what's possible, and then give them the tools to succeed. As a leader in this business, you can consider yourself to be kind of like a personal trainer at a gym. So, stupid <laughs> dog. He's over there whining. He's so loud. Anyway, if somebody, if, just imagine you're a personal trainer at a gym. Somebody comes to you, one of your clients, and says, Chris, I want to lose 50 pounds by summertime. Like, I want to feel great in my swimsuit. I don't want to be self-conscious when I go to the beach. Like, I want to feel confident. 50 pounds, I know is a big goal. Can I do that? You think I can do that? You're going to say, of course you can do that. Girl, I can show you how to be a bikini model in six months. Here's what you have to do. Like you're going to inspire them. Maybe show them pictures of before and afters. Maybe show them somebody even with their body type. Like, oh, you, this is the potential. Like you look, you could look like that person. Here's what you have to do. So first you inspire them and then you give them the tools. This many reps, this many sets of this many exercises. And then there are going to be times when you're pushing them out of their comfort zone and they're going to fall they can't complete the set and you're going to have to encourage them, right? You're going to have to kind of give them a little pick me up, like remind them of their why. Remember why you're doing this. Okay. Let's get back at it. You can do this again. You're the leader pouring belief into people, but ultimately you have no control over whether they show up at the gym. Do you have any control whatsoever of whether they come work out? You have any control whatsoever if they walk out the gym after they've worked hard and go to Krispy Kreme donuts? No, you don't have control over that, okay? So take that pressure off of yourself as a leader. Somebody else's success you are not responsible for. You are not responsible for a lack of their success. What you are responsible for is to inspire them, cast vision, pour belief into them, 
you and then equip them like give them the tools but ultimately they have to want this i don't drag anybody everybody who's on this call today is willingly on this call i did not drag anybody kicking and screaming i didn't have to try to talk anybody into it y'all are all here of your own accord you're excited to be here you wanted to be here right that's the type of person that i'm looking for that's the type of person i can work with i can invest in i can pour belief into and equip and they will go very far but i'm not going to drag anybody okay so just take that pressure off of yourself you feel like you're dragging people stop it i mean there are things you can do to learn the skill set of how to inspire people how to make people want this how to cast the vision if you can learn those skills but ultimately you're not responsible for somebody's success they have to it's all up to them the only person's name on their paycheck is theirs your name is not on their paycheck okay your name is on yours all right so I'm going to stop recording.